evening. I'd just like to, first of all, thank Pastor Jimmy and Mariana for this opportunity um, to trust me with a pulpit, to trust me with a band. It can be kivult as men, sir. And, uh, but this morning our pastor said, you know, we need some wild cats around here. <laughs> yeah, so I, I took that word. I took that word. And um, it's really good growing up in the house of the Lord. I'm so honored. I'm so honored to be a daughter from this house. I'm so honored. It's a privilege. It's a privilege to serve the Lord. You know, one day, um, we'd waited seven years for our first daughter, and when she had come, you know, all the, all the, the faffing and all of that had subsided, and I brought her to church, and someone had approached me in church and said to me, one day, you know, one day, one day your child is going to resent you. You know that? One day your child is going to resent you for choosing the ministry over them. And it was someone that I really respected. You don't need to know who it is. Um, and I just said, I just said, I walked away and I just said, Lord, my children will grow up knowing that it is an honor and a privilege serving the Lord. It is an honor and it's a privilege to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Can you please put up Acts chapter 2 and verse 17? And while he's getting that scripture, um, I just want to say that I have, you know, I've had several encounters with the Lord, and the Lord has spoken to me through various ways. One particular way the Lord speaks to me is through visions, through pictures. Sometimes it, it comes like a movie. Um, sometimes it comes through animations. You know, how many of you know that God speaks to you where you're at? Yeah? It's just amazing, hey? He doesn't give you, he doesn't speak to you over your head that you don't understand it. He, he meets you right there where you are. Just look at this. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 17, it says that in the last days, God says, God says that I will pour out my spirit upon all people. In another translation, it says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters will prophesy. And I'm so glad that I'm loving that prophetic word. Because God has been giving me prophetic words, not just my husband. Amen. I mean, our pastor prophesied about an army of women. And let me tell you, ladies, God is raising up an army of women. We don't have to be ashamed of our femininity as long as we know our position. And my position is my submission under my husband. I understand authority. I understand that he is my head. And that he is my covering. And I, I submit under that covering. And it's so important to understand our position. It's, un, it's important to understand the lane that God has in place for us. Amen, ladies? So I started to prophesy. And I started to prophesy confidently and accurately over the most, in the most peculiar situations and circumstances, over strangers, over government officials, um, over diplomats. You know, um, God has moved us, and without me even knowing the position of the person, the Lord positioned me. The Lord positioned me. The Lord positioned me. It's important for us to understand your position. Position. That is the title of this, this message tonight. Understanding my position. And so the scripture says that your sons and your daughters will prophesy, your young men and your, and your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. So now I, I do dream extensively, but the visions I see quite vividly quite often. So coming back from, uh, when we came down to, to SA, 
we started our ministry trip and we ended up in Cape Town. We finished off in Cape Town um, and, and then driving back, we usually take, and we love taking the Yugino Tunnel. It's a beautiful scenic route. We love the mountains. It's amazing. I feel so close to God when I'm amongst that mountains. It's just incredible. I feel his enormity and his presence and I hear him clearly and he can speak to me. And so when I'm driving through the tunnel and through those mountainous ranges over there, I position my ear and my eye and I say, Lord, show me. Show me. And so we're driving, and we're driving in the Western Cape, and lo and behold, as I look up, David's driving about 120, I see an eagle, a beautiful eagle, a spectacular, and, and as I'm about to say, to, to tell Denver, Denver sees the eagle as well, he's driving. It was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. And then the eagle took off, and he, and he, and he, and he left. And as we're driving, and I just felt this, there was just a significance in the atmosphere in the car. And as we're driving along, I see about plus 20 flamingos, pink flamingos. Have you ever seen that? Now, I've got a thing with pink flamingos. It's just a thing in the season of my life with flamingos. And I see flamingos. The house that the Lord has kept for us now in Dar, there's a little flay opposite where we are staying. There's a, a little soccer field. That the guys come and play soccer, and then there's a little flay. And sometimes, um, you know, when there's been a bit of rain, some birds, some phenomenal birds come and make their rest and come and have, you know, a drink of water. And sometimes a, not even a pink flamingo pops by, but a white flamingo. How amazing is that? How privileged am I? Hey, isn't it awesome? Yeah, so um, I saw these 20 plus flamingos and poops and then we left. Obviously, Dean, we couldn't see that because he was driving. But there was something significant to me. And as we go on now, coming to Cape Town, we drove through these beautiful yellow fields, and all we wanted to do, we wanted to stop to take a picture. I'm going somewhere with this. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to take a picture. Yes, sister. I, I wanted to, we wanted to stop and take a picture. We love pictures, as you can see on social media and that. Um, but we didn't have the time to stop. And so we made a commitment to the girls. On the way back, we'll find a spot, we'll stop, and we'll take a picture. Anyway, we're riding, we get to these yellow fields, and there isn't a stop because we don't want to take a detour and go out and get this yellow field. And I, I said to Dima, I'll just continue. God's going to give us a gap. God's going to give us a gap. And suddenly, as we take, and he says to me, are you sure? I said, yeah. And as we take the bend, there is, it was like it was waiting for us. There was an open gate. The yellow field was there. We could just, whoops, just turn in. It was open, waiting for us. Can you put up that one picture for me, please? The first picture. Um, you can take the scripture off. Yeah. There's our yellow field. Isn't that amazing? You can put on the next picture as well. Look at that. So God gives us a yellow field. He gives us a spot. We take this picture in the yellow field. We have a wow moment over there. We get back in the car, and I'm on Google, and I'm wanting to find out what is this flower because we don't know what this flower is. We don't know what this flower is. And I go on Google, and I find out that this flower is, we're standing in a canola field. We're in a, can, we're in a canola field, and canola is oil. Am I right? And suddenly my spirit just jumps to attention. My kids and I and my husband, we've been standing in a field of oil. But you see, the thing is this, that you will not know unless you do not see. You have to position your eye or else you miss the moment. Acts chapter 2 verse 17 says, And in the last days, in the last days, we all know that we're living in the last days. Some people have even expected Jesus to come already. We are living in the last days. A, there is an expectation. We have to be expectant. You can come at any moment in a twinkling of an eye. But where will you be found when he comes? What will your position be when he returns? You cannot see if you're not looking. So my question tonight to you is, what are you looking at? Because what are you not seeing that God wants you to see? I have been a woman under submission. 
um, the Lord has taught me submission under the most painful circumstances. Because, you know, us women, as girls, I know that arises, you know, clothes last night. But women, we are so um, governed by our emotions. We wake up in the morning, and if we don't feel happy, our whole day is miserable. Yeah. And suddenly when we look in the mirror, what we see is so obscured. We see ugly. We see the world through that negative feeling. The world doesn't love us. So the position of our emotional state is topsy-turvy. And we need to bring our emotions under submission to the authority of Christ. God has blessed us with emotions. We don't despise our emotions. We, we serve a God who, who meets us in our emotional capacity. He touches and he feels and he moves. But we have to align our emotions to the word of God. You know, God gives us emotions to feel his heart so that when we come into an atmosphere of worship, that we, can, that we can be a participator in the exchange of heaven. So that when we see these broken women and broken families, that God can say, go and minister, go in touch, go and minister, go in touch. But if our emotions is not in alignment with God, then we're just married to our emotions, ladies. We're only married to our emotions. What is your position? You have to position yourself. God told Abram in Genesis 15, verse 5, if you can put that up for me. God said to Abram, what did he say to Abram? Abram, look up. Look up. Look up and see your offspring. What did he say to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 2? Let's read Genesis 15. Sorry, I'm running ahead of myself. Genesis 15 verse 5, it says, and then, and then the Lord took Abram outside, outside, and said to him, look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. But there has to be a positioning. He came out, he came out, and he went outside. He came from one place he transitioned from one place into the other place. Joshua chapter 1 verse 2, Joshua's, God says to Joshua, in, jo in Joshua chapter 1 verse 2, he says, Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. He's gone. I want you to arise. Moses is gone. What do we do in a, in a season of death? in a season of disappointment, we can't move beyond that. If you look at the life of Joshua, here was his, his mentor, his father, the visionary, the one that God had spoken to, the one that God had visited, the one that God had given the commandments to, suddenly passes on. And Joshua's left in that position. And God says to him, Moses, Shake off the grief now. Shake off the grief. I want you to get up, and I want you to cross over. I want you to get up, and I want you to cross over. And I want you to take the people into the promised land. Some of us, here tonight, we are running instead of resting. Some of us are running instead of resting. You're running someone else's race. You're not running your own race. It's time to stop. It's time to stop. It's time to run your own race. It's time to get into position, to understand your position in the kingdom so that you can function in your purpose. There's so much striving going on in the kingdom of God. There's too much striving going on. There's too many accidents happening. People getting offended, well, this is my department and I should have been a greeter, but why did you greet my people? We don't understand our lane. We don't understand our position. I led Jeff's song and you shouldn't have led Jeff's song. Who do you think you are? You don't understand your position. You don't understand if you're coming or going. 
God says he wants to make us the head and not the tail. Do you know where you are? Where are you? Are you the head or are you the tail? Some of you have been fighting battles that you were not even meant to fight. And you are weary. There's a weariness. You are tired. You are disillusioned. Can I tell you what happened in transition? You know, the platform looks like a glamorous place, doesn't it? You know, you look at Pastor Jimmy and you're like, wow. I'm going to preach like him one day and signs and wonders. But do we even understand what happens when you exit the platform and you go back home? You know, Denver and I, we we just missed each other. We, um, he was traveling back. We, we had calculated everything because I needed to go back. If we didn't have to go back to put the kids in school, I would have stayed because it's a money saver. But the kids started at a certain time, and so we then planned that he would come back on the Monday, and even if I saw him for, you know, the evening of the Monday, and then I'd travel on the Tuesday. But unfortunately, due to flights, we, we couldn't get a flight on a Tuesday. We had to make the, we had to make the call for me to then leave on the Monday. And so here I am, I land in Johannesburg International. Um, My flight lands 10.35, and Denver's busy busy boarding his plane. And I had that whole morning. So I walk out at, you know, international arrivals, and I thought my husband's gonna jump out of the crowd, you know, he's like mad like that. I thought he was gonna jump out of the crowd and and surprise me (laughs) with himself. And then he wasn't there, and then I went up and I had a cup of coffee at Woolies, and he wasn't there, you know, and then I realized, okay, I'm not going to see him, and I, I get a big sorry for myself, her fool. <laughs> and then I, I came to pee in a beautiful young lady, when I said to her, she greeted me at the airport, and she said to me, how are you? I said, ah, man, I'm feeling a little bit sorry for myself, I haven't seen my husband. She says, you know what, at least you've got a husband, I don't have one. <laughs> Oh my, so what is, what is the big deal about position today? What are you on about, about this position thing? You know, maybe it's just a nice word, but no, it's not. It's not. Positioning is, there's a motion. It's from one dimension, from one place into another place. God is busy with transition. There's, it's positioning for a transition, That's what's happening. And as I was preparing this word, um, the Lord just reminded me again when I was pregnant. You know, that last trimester, I was so like a little shaky over this new baby, you know, like I needed to know everything and be in control. And uh, so the last trimester, this doctor says to me, oh, oh, you know, he does the check on me and he says, oh, yeah, no, she moved. The position has changed. She's ready for the transition. Yeah, your position has changed, and so she's getting ready for the birthing, you know. And so God wants to birth something beautiful in all of us. There's a, there's a new thing that God wants to release. But if our position is not accurate, there's going to be a struggle. There's going to be a wrestle. You have to be in the right position at the right time. Get into your lane. Get into your lane. Don't despise your time of serving. Don't despise it. Don't get into envy. Don't get into jealousy. That is where the enemy comes in and takes control and has a field day in our lives. I am so glad that I was a child in the house of the Lord. You cannot, you cannot Move on. You cannot transition on to the parentalhood, the parentals, unless you've been a child. Unless you've gone through the struggles with your parents. Unless you've learned to submit your strong world. I've got a very strong world child. I've got two very different children. I've got a um, very active African-like baby out in the bush and loves being dirty, you know, and climbing trees and beautiful. And then I've got Mercedes who's very girly and she likes white and she likes yellow, you know. 
two very different children. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful girls. I've got beautiful girls. Both of them are tender nature, tender, you know, prophetic. The Lord has given me an assignment for my kids. My assignment for them is to raise them up as end-time worshippers. That's my, I understand my position in their lives. I understand. And sometimes it's difficult. You know what I started doing? I started making cook sisters at the age of 42. <laughs> I'm now a cook sister queen. <laughs> I'm in the league of the aunties now. <laughs> I started introducing these Americans and these Europeans to the Cook Sisters. They said, oh my goodness, it's so lovely. What are they? I said, they're Cook Sisters. <laughs> so hashtag Cook Sisters. I'm making Cook Sisters famous in Tanzania. It's so awesome. It's so awesome. So I said, you know what? I will sell Cook Sisters to pay for my kids' piano lessons. I will do that. I will do that because I understand my position. Do you understand yours? Where are you at? Where are you at? Can I have the third picture up, please? Thank you. Yeah, so one day I was in worship and um, I, there, there was just a thick presence of the Lord like we've just had over this weekend in, in tonight's service and I, I hit the deck. I was just in the presence of the Lord. I was laying on my back. I couldn't move at all. And I just, the Lord was just ministering to me. And as I was laying there, I saw this picture, the visions and the dreams. I saw this picture of a cheetah. And this cheetah was standing next to me on all its fours and looking straight ahead and just looking, you know. Uh, the, I didn't sense any danger. This cheetah was just next to me. It wasn't a leopard. It was a cheetah. I did some research about her. <laughs> and uh, she was standing there, and she just looked ahead of her. And as I looked, I looked, I lifted my head in this vision, and as I looked, and, and she was, her eyes were positioned at a mountain. This was before we moved to Tanzania. Um, I didn't understand what I was seeing, but what I saw was beautiful. And I knew that the Lord was telling me that as you look at this cheetah, you're seeing yourself here. Yeah. And just last week, I, um, I follow, I think, Serengeti. Um, I think you can find them on Facebook. And, um, and they featured this picture of these cheetahs, this mama cheetah with a cub. Listen, listen to what they say. Um, they say that cheetahs are the most vulnerable of Africa's cats. The cub mortality is 95% high due to the predators like the lions and the hyenas. But the cheetah moms are so good at raising their cubs that they are now known as super moms. How awesome is that? I'm a super mom. The Lord just gave me a picture before we even left for Tanzania that he was going to raise me up as a super mom. He was just reinforcing my position in the kingdom of God. God is serious about our position, family. You know, the enemy understood his position. Do you know that the enemy understand? He understands rank. He understands authority. He, he knows his place. He knows his place. When God says, don't touch him, remember? When, when he had this chat with God about Job, he said, you don't touch him. He understands authority. We better make sure that we understand authority. Authority is a gift. It's not a curse. It's not a pain in our lives. If God has placed authority over you, obey the authority that God has placed in your life. I needed authority in my life. Sadly, my father left at a young age, and so I was left to my own devices. I didn't know if I was coming or going. I, I grew up between two homes, between my mom's home, whom I love dearly, and my grandparents' home. I had two sets of mom and my grandparents. I had a, a very carly father, strict father, 
grandfather, beg your pardon. And then I had this gentle mum. And then I had aunties that, you know, didn't understand their position. They didn't understand their position. So I would be sent to shop and back and forth and do their duties. And so I, I got lost. I didn't know whether I was a child or whether I was an adult. I didn't know whether I should be an adult or a child. In my grandparents' home, I was supposed to be this child in my mom's home. I had to make adult decisions and cook at a young age. I didn't understand my position. But when I had an encounter with Jesus and I came under submission, I understood my position. He brought me into that. Uh, he said to me, you, I'm your father. Don't go looking for your father. I'm your father. You just be. You be my daughter. That's all you do. You be my daughter. So the Lord affirms me and he says to me, I'm raising you up as a super mom right here in Africa. And as I had that vision of that cub, um, of that mom, uh, cheetah, and as I, I watched her, she looked at this mountain and little did I know that this mountain was situated right in Tanzania, Kilimanjaro. The Lord says, I'm taking you to the mountain. Yeah, I'm taking you to the mountain. I don't have much time left. Um, I want to put on um, another picture, but before I do that, Luke chapter 8, verse 22. Jesus gives his disciples an instructions, an instruction. Um, remember that scripture, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a raging storm going on. This is the setting. And Jesus instructs his disciples, Luke, 20, Luke chapter 8, 22. And he says to his disciples, let us go. Let us go over to the other sides. He says, let us go. There's another transition. And that word, um, that word, other side, it actually means to pierce through. Let us pierce through to the other side. Do you know that when you get into your position... Then there will be a transition. And in that transition, there will, be, there will be a fight. Because something is busy changing. When my child was busy repositioning herself in my womb, there was a lot of changes taking place. Suddenly, she was laying on my hip, and suddenly I felt this pain in my back, and I couldn't, my legs couldn't carry me for a little, because there was a change in her position. And sometimes when you change your position, there will be some uncomfortableness. And, you know, we are so used to comfort. We just want everything easy, easy going. You know, when I got back to Tanzania now, Denver was still in, in SA. We moved, we just dumped our bags at the new house. And so I had to go and unpack these bags and, and set up house. But when we got into the kitchen, you know, girls and their kitchens, um, there was rat poop all over the place. I didn't want to show you the pictures because it would horrify you. <laughs> And so, um, so there's rat poop. All my, my boxes that I closed with all my spices, they got into everything, into the garli and the, and the rice. So they just got into everything. And I knew that it wasn't just one. Oh, so I'm like, oh, dear Father. I didn't come back for this now, you know. Okay, right. So, right. You know, Renee's in action. Okay, we need to get this kitchen clean and sanitary. Get all these things out here. That's day number one. It took a whole day to clean this kitchen. Right. Okay. Get have a meeting with the two girls. I said, right, girls, um, we've got to face this reality. There's a rat. There's some rats in this place here. Okay. We've had rats at the previous house. We've had frogs. You know, we've had terrible crows. It's just been, yeah. Um, so anyway, so, so now I'm, I've cleaned the house, uh, the kitchen. I'm good to go. We can, I can start cooking in the kitchen. Day number two comes. Um, there's some movement, some rats. So I found some old rat poison, fortunately, somewhere from the old house. I put it down. And um, I think on this week move, we went home on the Wednesday, Friday or Saturday morning. Jorda was, was sleeping with me. Now, Jorda can be very dramatic. She's, a, she's got this big personality, <laughs> but she's says, buy a clean for um, little cockroaches and little creepy, crawly things. Okay, right. So she's been sleeping in my room all this time. And um, on this particular morning, I go into the room and I open the window and uh, the curtain and lo and behold, there lays Mr. Rat. 
there, and I, I ran downstairs and I had beautiful Rose who's been helping me. Um, I said, Rose, come quickly. Come and get this thing out before Jordan comes into a room. Okay, I should have put the picture up for you. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm in this kitchen and I just hear Jordan screeching. And I run upstairs and Jordan's standing on the bed shaking. Mommy, the rat is sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> I said, Jorda, this rat is dead. It is dead. Takes the rat out, goes. Okay, right. Two mornings later. Oh, goodness, I must finish up. Two mornings later. I get up early. I'm preparing the kids for school. It's about six in the morning. I go downstairs. And as I get to the bottom step, there's a rat looking at me. <laughs> Intoxicated. I could see because it didn't move fast, you know. So I, okay, I move. I thought, okay, let me just check quickly. <laughs> I move and it stood and moved to the door. Couldn't go anywhere else. So I ran into the kitchen and I called Rose. Rose, come quickly. Here's the other rat. <laughs> gets a little scoop, gets a little empty thing. She's going to pick up this rat now. I'm in the kitchen. Rose goes to this rat and the rat makes a run. Where does the rat run to? To me. <laughs> This is real life. This is after having a glorious time of ministry. Wonderful, hallelujah. I've got to go home and face rats. And this rat comes to me. And my position is here by this counter. And I jump as high as what I can. And suddenly this rat makes a move into the cupboard, under my food cupboard. And I'm like, no, I'm moving out of this house. I'm in a state. I'm Jesus. I'm not going to contend with rats in Jesus' name. <laughs> And, um, but you know, the Lord was so gracious that that same day, the rat made its way out of the cupboard and it was morse to it. So God helped us with these rats, you know. But God gives us, he gives us a grace. He gave me the grace. Even to laugh about having a rat situation. We moved into this nice house. We didn't have water for a whole week. We bathed in a little basin. But God gives us a grace to do these things. Because we understand our position. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. It's not going to move me and it's not going to shake me. We have pierced through to the other side. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I want, you to put, I want you to put the next picture up, my last picture. Um, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Um, this was so interesting to me. Um, that is... Uh, a calcified eagle, some bird, yeah, and um, that is that really happened. It's not a pic, it's not a drawing. It is an actual bird um, that was just parking on a twig at Lake Natron, and that is in Arusha. It's a lake in Arusha, the most one of the most serene lakes. Um, but this lake is a salt and a soda lake. Nothing happens there. Every bird that makes its lodging there ends up like that. When I saw that, it, it, it really gripped me, you know, because I've got a thing with eagles. I've always had a thing with eagles. I think we all have, you know. Um, but when I saw that... Oh, yay! <laughs> um... When I, when I saw that, it, um, it horrified me. You know, it was, a, it was a prophetic picture of what we could become if we don't understand our position. What does the Bible say in Isaiah about mounting up with wings as an eagle? That is not a picture of an eagle there. That eagle doesn't, is not functioning in his, in his nature. Why is he sitting on a twig? We should be mounting up. We should be flying high. Church, we need to know. We need to know where we're going. We need not to forget where we come from. We need to understand this road we are on. One of my absolute favorite scriptures, I think Joseph Garlington um, coined a song, the race isn't given to the swift, 
you know, the battle to the warrior. But those who endure until the end. Those who endure until the end. If you're looking for one platform in life, learn to serve. Learn to love authority. Understand your position. Let us stand together. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for your word. I thank you for your word in my life. I thank you, God, that you have moved me from one place into the next place. I thank you for these people, God, that you move each and every one of them. If, they, if there's been any stagnation, that God would cause you to rise up on wings of an eagle in Jesus' name. We break any lethargy from you. We break any bitterness from you that will hold you down tonight in the name of Jesus so that you can transition into that place that God has for each and every one of you. God, we just release your blessing over your people, Father. We thank you, God, that you are in this place, that you have your way in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.